before it's taught a little bit differently. It's not you go to the lab to do a lab. You're in that classroom. That's your science classroom, and it can function as either a teaching space or a lab. But there's only two per grade now, whereas in the new design, excuse me, there's, there's not two per grade now. There's four. There's two for one grade, two for another, and, and zero. zero for the third. <coughs> Sixth grade has none. Exactly. Right. So in the new design, it's, it's the same number of class science classrooms, but now all of them will be designed to be labs. teaching spaces slash labs. So definitely, you know, total of six labs at the high school and six fully functioning science classrooms in the middle school. Something else I, I kind of didn't quite pick out from the from looking at those those designs. And just so. one other quick comment too that I just want to emphasize again with everybody that our partner in this project, the Mass School Building Authority, who will be contributing forty-seven million dollars towards the project, they have a template uh, and it's based on our enrollment and our needs, our, our educational needs that we fit into. We cannot exceed that. We can't have extra classrooms even if we wanted to. Uh, beyond our enrollment needs because the MSBA will not allow it. So they're, they're very careful in uh, dictating to us what we can and what we can't do. Yeah, and I think that, I, I wanted to make that point too. Yeah, uh, yeah. We, can't, we can't cut this project. This, the MSBA basically said to us, this is what you need based on your enrollments at these two schools. We probably would have wanted more if we could have gotten more. But Absolutely. there's a formula, as Jerry says, and, and they go over everything. So there's no right. detail. Right. So a scaled down project would mean we would have less than we have now. Right. Mm -hmm. The other point that I wanted to make, and I, reasonable. I don't know if right. I made it well enough the other night, but a gentleman asked the question about alternatives, and we went through a number of options painstakingly as to whether or not we would build a high school, a middle school, renovate both buildings, or build a new high school. And, with, in, in, and in conjunction with the uh, Mass School Building Authority, the school building committee, uh, secondary school building committee, came to a determination after going through all of those options that this was the best option. This was the best option as far as our needs, as far as the economy of doing it, the way we're doing it, and quite frankly, uh, the opportunity to, to get this amount of money from the MSBA to deal with both buildings, which are badly in need of improvement. So, and just check my last thing. I'm checking my notes. Fifteen percent of the classrooms at the high school are currently temporary modular classrooms and 25 percent right. of the classrooms at the middle school are temporary modular classrooms. I might add they've been in place for a while. It's not like mm -hmm. they're all new. <laughs> well, we've already started to repair some of them, I believe. Floors and ceilings and uh, sure. roofs and windows. windows and Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. Thanks. Thank Off you. to the selectmen's meeting to set the date for the selection. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right, next on our agenda is the student report, and we, tonight we have uh, Kristen Shevlin here. Uh, Kristen, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, so this Friday, the North Reading High School is um, holding their semi-formal dance at 7 o'clock, um, and kids from outside of our school can go to this dance this year, so that'll be fun. And we had midterms last week, and we had half days, and we had two tests for each day, and grades closed on Friday, and teachers have to have it in this Wednesday. Um, basketball, the boys had a game last Friday night and they lost. Um, hockey had a game on Saturday and they lost. Uh, wrestling had a meet and they beat Triton 18, well their record now is 18-3 and they beat Triton who was a defending D3 state champs. So it was a big win Good. for North Reading yeah. and Linfield. So that, they were really happy about that. Um, opening night for a zombie prom for maskers is February 3rd at the high school. Um, Drama Fest, they found out that it's in Holliston, Massachusetts, and that is in February as well. Um, track meet uh, versus Linfield is on Wednesday this week. Um, and last week we had four girls, Jenna Crawford, Bree Goddard, Nikki Roberts, and Kristen Landry. Uh, they broke the school record for the distance medley. And we had a movie night for the French Club today at, after school. And National Honor Society letters were handed out today as well. Great. School. And my student work is a Spanish project that I had to do. Um, and it's based on agro, ag, like tourism for, in Argentina. And what we had to do was like a few slides of just like pictures of uh, farms in Argentina and farms in North Reading and like, surrounding areas. And then we just had to write a, 
a, like an essay in Spanish about it, and I just gave you two paragraphs. It's just basically talking about ha like what um, tourism is in Argentina and how it benefits the economy and simulates it. And then I talked about um, Luna Farm and Seven Acres Farm in North Reading, and I've actually been to both, and I've worked at both farms as well, and I talked a little bit about that and how they're a big part of our town and what they do for it. And it's just, it was an interesting project learning about how different countries What like did farm. you use for technology? Uh, the technology is just like, mm hmm? iPads? Oh yeah, I, yeah, we actually have iPads for this class, and so our project was to do this um, project on an iPad, so, for the first time. Very I can translate most of this, you know. Can you? Yeah. I only took like six years of Spanish. In our community, the culture of, I don't know what that agro-turismo is, but. Yeah, just like tourism. Like some examples. You can't yeah. say so that pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay. Um, I remember my Spanish what, from way back when. What level of Spanish are you? I'm Spanish 5. So you're in Spanish 5? Yeah. Okay. How long was the essay that you had to write? Um, just like five paragraphs. That's still a lot to write in a foreign language. Yeah. It's a lot to write in English. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, does anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, <laughs> Could I ask Kristen just to talk a little bit about um, how was it different using an iPad for this kind of project as opposed to any other kind of technology? Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I know a lot of kids in my class didn't, um, they don't have iPads, so it was different that we used um, different programs like Keynote and Pages that they've never seen before. So it was, we had a class period to do this project in so we didn't have a lot of time to really like focus on these and really like learn how to like use it so it was difficult for some people I know we were also given the option to use our own computers at home as well because most people didn't know how to use it but um, we also did this in another class as well and from that class we learned how to use the iPad so for some of us it was easier than others but um, I think it was really helpful to use an iPad like at the same time like we it was just like different for us and um, I think like what an iPad has to offer is like I, it's just better I mm -hmm. think and it gave us a lot more options for this project. Thank you. Thank you Kristen. Any other questions or comments about Kristen's work? Thank you very much and I know you probably have to get going so don't feel bad about leaving. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Kristen. Thank you. Next on our agenda we have Steve Nathan here. Steve is there anybody else that's going to be here with you? Uh, just me. Okay. Steve's here from the Forest Committee, and he wants to talk to the school committee uh, about a proposal he has for some of the school-owned land. If this guy's building a school, he's in the forest. I mean, well, what, I hope I mean, I hope we can put them together somehow. And they can <laughs> can we use the wood from the forest to build yeah, get, school? We can get them up there to clear the lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, Steve Nathan, 301 Haverhill Street. I think we were in front of you about a year ago or so ago about a forestry management plan for the land that you right. uh, Dana Rowe. Uh, yeah. came in. Are responsible for this. Um, land that the Conservation Commission and the town Board of Selectmen are under control as well. And I'm right. going to remind you of the pretty picture I have. It's yeah. this land up by Swan Pond. It's on both sides of it. I'm familiar with it. <laughs> Your yellow is the land. I think the pink is the Board of Selectmen. Maybe one is Board of Selectmen and one is um, Conservation. So these four highlighted areas is where we had the, for the, the first um, phase of our forest management uh, plan uh, acted out. So we had a forester come in and put out bids for um, thinning um, some harvestable wood from that land. Uh, when you do a harvest, you do about 20%, so you don't really notice it. It's just kind of uh, healthy for the forest. And it's some re revenue in for the town, and so the trees don't you know, lie waste. You actually can make use of them. Um, and I think the bids, uh, Kathy made some copies that went around. Yes. But we actually got three bids in, which was pretty good. Mm -hmm. And the bids that came in were um, at or slightly higher than we were expecting. So between all four parcels, uh, it comes in at about $5,000, roughly. Um, obviously, we'd go for the highest bid, um, which is slightly more than $5,000. Um, and just to remind you what we've been working with the town administrator, um, all the money, actually, I, I guess, in this situation goes into a Board of Selectmen fund. Mm -hmm. um, but it's kind of hopefully we're getting them to earmark uh, proportionally for how much land you guys have, that, that you have, that the um, conservation has, and the Board of Selectmen um, have responsibility for. 
And so we're hoping that you'd consider having some kind of um, environmental science programs that will be able to be funded to take the kids out to the forest and uh, integrate some uh, lab or uh, field trips and some of the science classes. Um, or any other kind of, you know, it's really to, for you to spend as you wish, but you know what, we'd encourage you to kind of have some kind of forestry uh, influence to it. Steve, when you do, when this is done by the bidder, is somebody from the Forest Committee present to supervise it or oversee it? Uh, John Robbins, our forester, would actually be overseeing it. He would, okay. And they would do it during the winter months, and since the winter, if it ever comes, or actually it just started, um, they're actually late starting, so we're not sure they'll actually even do it this season. It's about a week's worth of work, so it actually happens fairly quickly. So it's very likely it'll actually happen uh, next winter. Okay. But we'll, we'd let you know before it happens. Yeah. Any comments, uh, questions from the uh, committee? Sounds great. No? Kathy, do you have anything that you want to say? I do not. I just, when um, this is going to be taking place, it will be helpful for planning purposes if we're going to bring students out. Yeah, we'd try to avoid students at that time. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting part would be maybe uh, before and after. Sure. I mean, uh, so you have to kind of take a quick look at the forest now and right. see what a thinning, thinning looks thinning. like. Yeah. And then almost periodic times yeah. uh, to see how it grows back. It grows back. back. That's cool. Okay. We'd, we'll need a, uh, a motion for uh, to approve the Forest Committee entering into a contract to, uh, what's the right word, Steve, to harvest? Yeah, to harvest a, a, a thinning. A harvest, a, a harvest a thinning of uh, town uh, school property uh, at Swan Pond and whatever other school areas uh, we designate. So Some second. Okay, we have a motion by Cliff and a second by Mel. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion carries by vote of four and a half. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. You're a busy guy these days. No. <laughs> Never a dull moment. Thank you. Next on the agenda, we have an update on the MSBA uh, um, secondary school building project. It's a fairly lengthy update, but it's very, very important information, so I'll ask the superintendent to present that. Sure. Thank you. Uh, the last SSBC meeting was held on Tuesday, January 10th, and the SSBC that evening voted unanimously to continue with our current architect, Doran Whittier, for the remainder of the project. So that was a very important vote. Um, Doran Whittier and our OPM are putting together an RFQ to, be to begin a two-step procurement process for the CM at risk. And I'm happy to say that uh, Mr. Bowers is sitting on the selection subcommittee um, who will be making the identification of um, moving forward with the CM at risk. Cliff, I don't know if there's anything that you want to add at this time. We've, we've uh, got a draft um, uh, request for qualifications out already, I believe. It's, Great. It's, it's been drafted anyway. It's in the process of going out. That's very quick. Thank you. Um, the reimbursement rate from MSBA for the, to the Town of North Reading for eligible costs is determined to be 51.54%. No, I'm sorry. That's not correct. It's 51.49%. Can I have a question on that? So that that won't change if they approve this project tomorrow is there a chance that it could go up or down at the vote at the msba i don't think so i think on january 9th mm -hmm. when we went in to meet with them and we sat down and we kind of dotted the i's and crossed the t's that there was a very slight calculation error uh, right. at that time and it went up from i think it was 51.45 to 51.49 or something along those lines but i think that figure is pretty much locked in mel They've already done all the work to, in the formula to determine what our base is and then what points we're going to get in addition to that. So I just, I really don't see that changing. And the, and the price, the, the, the total cost for the project won't change either? I don't see, I don't see At the At least cost tomorrow when they, no. when they vote tomorrow. It no, is tomorrow, I, right? Yeah, yeah, tomorrow. I think the cost will be $107,000,000, $3,540 okay. I'm pretty sure. The right? MSBA the board meeting is Wednesday. The meeting is Wednesday, yeah. okay. the 25th. The, um, we actually had to sign a certification of that reimbursement rate. The, the chair of the school committee, the town administrator, and I signed that. Oh, okay. So that locks in that reimbursement rate, okay. and that has already been sent back because the MSBA needs it for their board meeting on Wednesday. There was also a brief discussion about ethics and the involvement of SSBC members in um, or with the Citizens Committee. So it was suggested that Town Clerk Barbara Statz attend a future meeting of the SSBC to review the ethics law with the members Excellent of that idea. committee. And so we'll look to make that happen. 
the SSBC also voted unanimously to recommend the dates of Monday, March 19th for the special town meeting 